Hello students, welcome to lecture 12, MVU through sufficient statistic, minimum variance unbiased estimator through sufficient statistic. We saw that MVUE is the most desirable estimator. Kramer Rao theorem sets a bound on the minimum variance of the unbiased estimator. If the MVUE reaches the CRLB, it can be obtained through the factorization del L del theta vector that is equal to I theta into theta hat minus theta, where theta is the parameter vector, theta hat is the unbiased estimator vector and I theta is the Fisher information matrix. However, the CRLB may not be achieved by the MVUE. So, uh, in that situation, the concepts of sufficient statistic and complete statistic may be used to find the MVU under certain conditions. So, we will introduce the concepts of sufficient statistic and complete statistic in this lecture. We will start with sufficient statistic. The observation x1, x2 up to xn contain information about the unknown parameter theta. So, because of that we will be able to estimate theta from the observations. An estimator should carry the same information about theta as the observed data. Whatever information is there for theta same should be uh, carried by the estimator also. Now, we will go to sufficient statistic. A statistics T x 1 x 2 up to x n of theta is called sufficient if it contains the same information about theta as contained in the random samples x 1 x 2 up to x n. In other words, the conditional PDF f x 1 x 2 up to x n as a function of theta given t is equal to t does not involve theta. So, this conditional PDF does not involve theta, then we will say that this statistic T x 1 x 2 up to x n is sufficient. Now, in the case of discrete random variables x 1 x 2 up to x n, the conditional PDF above is replaced by the conditional PMF. So, uh, that means, in the case of discrete random variable x 1 x 2 up to x n, uh, this statistic T x 1 x 2 up to x n of theta is sufficient if this conditional PMF, conditional PMF of the data given t is equal to small t does not involve the parameter theta. So, we have defined uh, the sufficient statistic and let us see an example. Suppose x i is normally distributed with mean mu and variance 1 for i is equal to 1 to 2 and t x 1 x 2 is equal to x 1 plus x 2. We will examine if t x 1 x 2 is a sufficient statistics. Now, the conditional PDF f x 1 x 2 as a function of mu given t x 1 x 2 is equal to small x 1 plus x 2 is equal to joint pdf f x 1 x 2 x 1 plus x 2 as a function of mu divided by the marginal pdf that is f x 1 plus x 2 as a function of mu. So, this is the conditional pdf in terms of the joint pdf and marginal pdf. Now, the same can be written as f x 1 x 2 mu as a function of mu divided by f x 1 plus x 2 as a function of mu, because x 1 x 2 and this x 1 plus x 2 is a function of x 1 x 2. Therefore, the p d f will be same as uh, the p d f of x 1 x 2. So, that way this expression is equal to a joint PDF of x1 x2 as a function of mu divided by 
p d f of x 1 plus x 2 as a function of mu. Now, since x i's are i i d Gaussian therefore, join p d f will be the product of the individual p d f. So, that way f of x 1 into f of x 2 we can write like this. So, 1 by 2 pi into e to the power minus half x 1 minus mu whole square plus x 2 minus mu whole square. So, this is the joint p d f divided by marginal p d f that is the p d f of x 1 plus x 2. Now, I know that x 1 is normally distributed with mean mu and variance 1 and x 2 is also normally distributed with mean mu and variance 1. Therefore, x 1 plus x 2 will be distributed as normal mean will be mean of x 1 plus mean of x 2 that is 2 mu and uh, variance of x 1 plus variance of x 2 that will be is equal to 2. So, that way this will be normal with mean 2 mu and variance 2. So, therefore, this marginal p d f of x 1 plus x 2 will be given by this. Now, if we simplify uh, we will get this expression. So, 1 by root pi will be only there and bringing this to the numerator we will get like this. And ultimately if we simplify this expression we will get uh, the same equal to 1 by root pi into e to the power minus 1 fourth into x 1 square plus x 2 square plus 2 x 1 x 2. So, here we see that mu is not involved. So, this conditional p d f does not involve mu. Therefore, uh, this statistics x 1 plus x 2 is a sufficient statistic. So, we see that uh, this conditional p d f does not involve any parameter mu hence t x 1 x 2 is equal to x 1 plus x 2 is a sufficient statistics for mu. We will uh, see one example for uh, a statistic which is not sufficient. Suppose we have this t x 1 x 2 is equal to x 1 plus 2 x 2. Earlier we considered x 1 plus x 2, now x 1 plus 2 x 2. Now, this conditional p d f f x 1 x 2 as a function of mu given that t x 1 x 2 is equal to small x 1 plus 2 x 2 that we can write as joint p d f of x 1 x 2 as a function of mu divided by marginal p d f at point x 1 plus 2 x 2 as a function of mu. So, if we write the Gaussian p d f for uh, these two then we will get numerator as this and denominator as this. Here we see that from these two expression we cannot cancel out mu therefore, this will involve mu. So, this conditional p d f given this statistic will involve mu therefore, it is not a sufficient statistic. And now, we will discuss one important theorem what is known as the factorization theorem that is Neyman and Fisher factorization theorem. This is one of the ways to de determine whether a statistic is sufficient or not. For continuous random variables x 1, x 2 up to x n, this statistic t x 1, x 2 up to x n is a sufficient statistic for theta if and only if this joint p d f as a function of theta is product of two function g and h. g is a function of uh, uh, the parameter theta and the statistics t x and h is a function of data only it is a function of x h x 1 x 2 up to x n it does not involve any theta. So, that way uh, uh, we factorize uh, the joint p d f in terms of two factor where g theta t x is a non constant it should be a proper function of x 1 x 2 etcetera and non negative function of theta n t x 1 x 2 up to x n 
and h x h x 1 x 2 up to x n is a non negative function of x 1 x 2 up to x n and it does not involve in any parameter theta. So, then we say that uh, uh, this statistic will be sufficient. So, that way uh, we have to see the uh, joint PDF if it is a product of two factors one factor involve theta and t other factor is a function of h x only then uh, this statistic will be sufficient. Uh, for discrete case uh, we will be considering the condition in terms of joint PMF therefore, t x is sufficient if and only if this joint PMF p x theta as a function of theta is product of g theta t x into h x where g and h are defined as earlier. So, we have introduced the factorization theorem we will try to prove this considering the discrete random variables x 1 x 2 up to x n. Let us denote the particular value of t x by small t that is small t is equal to t of small x 1 small x 2 up to small x n. Suppose, T x is sufficient statistic then P m f probability mass function of x as a function of theta that is equal to probability of x is equal to x as a function of theta. Now, if we introduce any function T x then this joint probability will be also same therefore, this probability is same as probability of x is equal to small x and t x is equal to t as a function of theta. Now, this I can write as probability of t x is equal to t of course, as a function of theta and then into conditional probability probability of x is equal to small x given that t x is equal to t and this will also be a function of theta. So, this is uh, by applying the uh, conditional probability result. Now, I know that T x is a sufficient statistics therefore, this factor will not involve any theta. So, I can write this term simply as probability of x is equal to small x given that T x is equal to T because it does not involve theta as T x is a sufficient statistic. So, this term now I can expand in terms of the joint PMF summation of joint PMF for those value of x for which t x is equal to t into this part now this is a function which does not involve any parameter or the statistics it is simply a function of x. So, that way we have established that this uh, joint PMF is product of g n h where g is a function of theta n t x and h is a function of x only and it is given by this probability of x is equal to small x given that t x is equal to t. So, we have proved this part and uh, now let us see the converse part uh, suppose p x is equal to g of theta t x into h x this is true then we have to show that t x is a sufficient statistics. Now, this conditional p m f probability that x is equal to small x given that t x is equal to t as a function of theta. Now, you apply the definition of conditional uh, probability that is probability of x is equal to small x and this comma is for n t x is equal to t divided by the marginal probability probability that t x is equal to t. Since t x is a function of x this we can write as probability of x is equal to small x divided by probability of t x equal to t. Now, we will apply this factorization result. So, we will get g of theta t into h x divided by summation g of theta t into h x x such that t x is equal to t. So, this g of theta t will be common for all. So, we are taking common here and uh, 
therefore, uh, this denominator will be g of theta t into summation h x x such that t x is equal to t. So, this g of theta t and this g of theta t will get cancelled, therefore, it will be simply h x divided by summation h x x such that t x is equal to t. And clearly, uh, this expression that is this conditional PMF does not involve any parameter theta, therefore, t x is a sufficient statistic. Therefore, we have proved both necessary and sufficient conditions. So, for discrete case, T x is sufficient if and only if this joint PMF is a product of two functions g and h. And similarly, for the continuous case also, we can establish that T x is sufficient if and only if the joint PDF is product of two factors. One is function of theta and T x, other is simply a function of x. We will consider an example, suppose x 1, x 2 up to x n are i i d Gaussian random variables with unknown mean mu and known variance 1. Then T x equal to summation x i i going from 1 to n is a sufficient statistic for mu. How we will show this? We will write the joint PDF as a function of mu. This is product of the individual PDF, marginal PDFs and all are IID. So, same mean and same variance 1 and this product we are writing as summation and this now we can expand x i minus mu whole square. So, that we will get two factors here now. One factor is this and the other factor is this. We observe that this second factor, this is a function of x size only and the first factor is function of both the statistic and mu. Therefore, we conclude that T x equal to summation x i, i going from 1 to n is a sufficient statistic for mu, because this joint PDF is factorized into two terms. One term involves x size only, other term involves the statistic and the parameter. Now, we will establish one very important theorem, Rao Blackwell theorem. Suppose theta hat dash is an unbiased estimator of theta and T x is a sufficient statistic for theta. Then another estimator we will get theta hat that is the conditional expectation of theta hat dash given T x. This is the conditional expectation. This is unbiased, not only unbiased, but its variance of theta hat, variance of theta hat is less than or equal to the variance of theta hat dash. So, this is the Rao Blackwell theorem corresponding to any unbiased estimator theta hat dash. We have another unbiased estimator with lower or equal variance. We will prove this e of theta hat will be e of because theta hat is equal to this e of e of theta hat dash given T x. Now, uh, using the property of conditional expectation, so uh, we have a property like e of x given y. So, this will be same as e of x. So, this conditional expectation which is a random variable in terms of y and if we take the expectation in terms of y, then we will get e of x. Now, we apply the property of conditional expectation e of theta hat is equal to the expectation of this conditional expectation e of e of theta hat dash given T x and this will be same as e of theta hat dash. Uh, and this is unbiased, therefore, it will be equal to theta. Therefore, E of theta hat is equal to theta. Therefore, theta hat is an unbiased estimator of theta. So, we got the unbiased property of theta hat. Now, let us see the variance of theta hat dash. By definition, it is equal to E of theta hat dash minus theta whole square because it is an unbiased estimator. 
now apply this conditional expectation property that will be E of E of theta hat dash minus theta whole square given T x. Now, uh, this mean square value theta hat dash minus theta whole square is greater than equal to the square of the mean. So, that way we can write in terms of square of the mean here. So, now E of theta hat dash given T x that will be equal to theta hat and this is a constant quantity. So, E of theta given T x will be theta itself this quantity will be equal to E of theta hat minus theta whole square. Therefore, variance of theta hat dash is greater than equal to variance of theta hat that means, variance of theta dash is less than or equal to variance of theta hat dash that we established this. Thus, this sufficient statistic T x help us to find a better estimator theta hat is equal to E of theta hat dash given T x and variance of that estimator theta hat is less than or equal to variance of theta hat dash. But still we have the question is theta hat that is equal to E of theta hat dash given T x is a minimum variance unbiased estimator. To answer this question we have to discuss one more concept that is the complete statistic complete statistic. A statistic T x is said to be complete if for any theta and a bounded function g of T x the condition E of g T x is equal to 0 for all theta implies that probability of g T x is equal to 0 is equal to 1. That means, g T x will be 0 with probability 1. It also means that there is no non-zero unbiased estimator for 0. Suppose, uh, uh, 0 is the quantity and we want to find out any estimator for 0 such that E of uh, G T x is equal to 0. This is the definition for unbiased estimator, but then this G T x must be equal to 0 and there is no non-zero unbiased estimator for 0 that way also we can interpret. And completeness is a property of the distribution of T x, same estimator T x may be complete for one distribution, but may not be complete for another distribution. We will give one example, suppose x i's are i i d Bernoulli random variable, this is the symbol for Bernoulli random variable it is uh, symbol is like binomial with n is equal to 1 that is why we are writing p 1 theta. And parameter theta is the probability parameter and T x is equal to summation x i i is equal to 1 to n. Clearly, T x is a binomial distribution with uh, parameter n, n is the number of repetition and theta is the success parameter because T x is a sum of individual Bernoulli random variables. So, it is a binomial with parameter n and theta and T x takes value success may be 0, 1 up to n. Thus, the probability mass function of at point t will be given by n c t theta to the power t into 1 minus theta to the power n minus t, t going from 0 to n. And expected value of g t x, t x is a function of x now. So, if I consider expected value of any bounded function g t x, it will be given by this summation t going from 0 to n g t into n c t into theta to the power t into 1 minus theta to the power n minus t. Now, we will apply the condition for completeness. So, E of g t x will be this summation as I showed earlier. Now, 1 minus theta to the power n is common. So, that I can take out. So, it will be uh, same as 1 minus theta to the power n summation t going from 0 to n g t into n c t into theta by 1 minus theta to the power t is equal to 0. So, this equality can be written as this for all theta in the open interval 0 to 1. So, theta can be anything 
between 0 and 1, accepting 0 and 1. Therefore, we get now one condition, this part we can cancel out, summation t going from 0 to n g t into n c t into theta by 1 minus theta to the power t is equal to 0. Now, this condition will be satisfied because it is a uh, polynomial in theta by 1 minus theta. So, uh, uh, this polynomial can be 0 if and only if all coefficients vanished. That means, g t must be equal to 0 for t is equal to 0, 1, 2 up to n. Hence, t is a complete statistic. So, in this case, we prove that t is a complete statistic. Now, we will consider another example. Suppose x 1, x 2 up to x n are IID normal 0 mean variance sigma square random variables. They are normally distributed with mean 0 and variance sigma square and t x is equal to summation x i i going from 1 to n. Clearly, because it is a sum and all x i are 0 mean t x will have normal distribution and with mean 0 and variance n sigma square and we observe that e of t x is equal to 0. So, this is for uh, non trivial x. Therefore, if we consider the equation e of g t x is equal to 0, it will have non trivial solution g t x is equal to t x. If we substitute g of t x is equal to t x, then this equation will be satisfied. Therefore, t x that is equal to summation x i, i going from 1 to n is not a complete statistic in this case. Let us summarize the class a statistics t x 1 x 2 up to x n of theta is called sufficient if the conditional p d f that is uh, conditional p d f of x x 1 x 2 up to x n as a function of theta given that t is equal to t or the conditional p m f p x 1 x 2 up to x n as a function of theta given t is equal to t does not involve parameter theta conditional p d f or conditional p m f does not involve the parameter theta. Then we discuss the factorization theorem for continuous random variables x 1 x 2 up to x n this statistic t x 1 x 2 up to x n is a sufficient statistic for theta if and only if uh, we can factorize the joint p d f as a two factors one factor g is a function of theta t x and other one is h x which is simply a function of x 1 x 2 up to x n. For discrete case t x is sufficient statistic if and only if joint p m f is product of these two factors. Now, Rao Blackwell theorem given an unbiased estimator theta hat dash, this sufficient statistic T x helps us to find a better estimator theta hat is equal to E of theta hat dash given T x. This is the conditional expectation of theta hat dash given T x. Now, this estimator has the property that it is not only unbiased, uh, but its variance is lower than or equal to the variance of theta hat dash. Then we discuss about complete statistic. A statistic T x is said to be complete if for any theta and a bounded function g of T x. The condition e of g T x equal to 0 for all theta implies that uh, g T x is equal to 0 with probability 1. So, uh, this is the definition of complete statistic. Now, we will look into the M view in terms of a complete sufficient statistic in the next lecture. Thank you. <laughs>